You are a former Democratic operative, and you're talking about deposing the president. That sounds political. No, it sounds righteous. How so? Because my client is credible. She's telling the truth. My understanding is that Dr. Ford has already passed a lie detector test. There's no need to go forward with this nomination at this stage. I don't think there's anything wrong with calling out people that look like me for not doing enough to defend women and minorities and people of color, and I'm going to continue to do that. But now that Avenatti has been accused himself of domestic violence, he is a big fan of due process for both sides. Women, including his ex-wife, have come to his defense, who apparently in this case do not hashtag believe survivors. This is the problem with blanket statements. Each of these cases are individual. Each circumstance is unique, and each needs to be treated as such. Each accuser and accused deserves to have the opportunity to tell their side of the story. That is how our system of justice works in this country. Now, Education Secretary Betsy DeVos is demanding, after a year of studying how these cases have been handled on college campuses across this country, under strict rules that were imposed on them by the Obama administration, that there was a lack of justice in the way they were often carried out. In many cases, young men were rightfully punished and kicked out of school, and the women who accused them were vindicated. In others, though, young men were kicked out after a sham hearing in which they were not even allowed to see the evidence against them. In some cases, they were not permitted to have a lawyer present with them during the proceedings, while they were interrogated by a panel of three professors who were chosen by the school. Corey Mock's father knows that situation all too well because it happened to his son. C.D. Mock, welcome. Good to have you here tonight, sir. Hi, Martha. Glad to be back with you again. I, I mean, this is a, a story that I know left a deep mark on your life. Your son was accused of rape, then he was exonerated by his school. Then they said, no, wait a minute, we think this did actually happen. Uh, it was a torturous process that he was eventually um, found to, to be set free of um, and that he was not found guilty of. The woman who accused him still stands by her accusation. What was wrong with the process? that you saw? Well, we actually had a much better situation than a lot of these families today. Um, we, we actually were afforded some due process at, uh, at my son's school. Uh, the problem was the push from the Obama administration uh, pushing the schools to find these young men guilty or responsible and get them off campus. And they weaponized the schools to do this by threatening to take away their federal funding mm -hmm. if they didn't. And that was the big problem in, uh, in, our, in our case and, and remains a problem today. Yeah. You know, what we're hoping with these new rules is, and we're cautiously optimistic, that the, the days of the kangaroo courts in our colleges is gone, uh, hopefully, and that uh, these colleges will stop railroading young men uh, and not affording them any due process whatsoever and calling them guilty uh, upon accusation. You know, there, there was a push, as we say, uh, under these new rules that went into effect in the Obama administration. There was all this discussion of rape culture and how there was rape culture across the country and that it was almost epidemic and that the only way to stop it was to make sure that if, if someone was accused, that they were basically, in, in many cases, almost immediately removed from campus. And that's how the schools showed that they were taking it genuinely seriously, right? Yeah, that's correct. And, and those it amazes me. Those statistics are still being used today uh, by people who want to perpetuate this for reasons which I, it amazes me. I just don't understand it at all. Um, but that's, yeah, that's pretty much been, been the case. I mean, it... it you know, there was a problem, and the problem was there were situations and instances where young women were uh, getting sexually assaulted, and maybe yeah. it was a high-profile athlete or someone like that at a college campus, and, and it got pushed under the rug, and certainly that's happened. The response was to create an imaginary epidemic, a, an imaginary crisis that existed where statistics of one in five and one in four uh, women in college are, are being sexually assaulted, which, which are just, it's lunacy. 
And, uh, and yet, you know, the Obama administration, for some reason, uh, latched on to this. And, uh, and that was the, you know, the, the point of them perpetuating this, uh, this yeah. farce and creating these, these rules. And the great tragedy in this is, as you say, that, that the cases that are genuine and that um, need to be resolved and where people need to be punished for their behavior get lost in sort of the shuffle of this and that there's not a, a good enough process where both sides feel that they're heard and that the truth can will out in the end. Um, C.D. Mock, thank yeah. you. Yeah, go ahead. Final thought. And I gotta go. Well, just to say that, you know, there, there, there are women that men rape women and, and women lie about men and people are people. And we just need to make sure that we've got a, a good rule of law in our due process yeah. to make sure that people who are innocent are not deemed to be guilty before they're proven guilty. Mr. Mock, thank you very much. Good to talk to you tonight. Thanks for being here.